Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. Yes, I was gone on Saturday and Sunday and also Monday. Didn't make videos. I had a long weekend on Kopipi with my two oldest daughters. We were doing some fun stuff over here, but I will talk about that a little bit later. In today's video, of course, four amazing Bitcoin charts. Why did we just fall below 40K? Is this normal? Is Bitcoin going to die? Are we going to disappear from the earth? Let's talk about that. I will show you amazing charts that will give you a very relaxed feeling on this beautiful Tuesday morning here on Phuket. Uh, beautiful walking on the beach, of course. Yes, explaining exactly what is happening with those amazing charts, guys. Also a travel tip, also a trading tip, also some crazy cool news, and yes, of course, a live advice at the end. Let's quickly jump into the charts to show you first what exactly is happening to Bitcoin at the moment. Bam. Today, starting with the four hour chart, guys, we can see there a beautiful sell signal on the four hour chart, closing of the candles down below the stepping line. Also, when we look at the other parts, the blue line was down below the white line, the white line was curling down, and yes, there was also a lot of blue and yellow appearing, and the red line was on top. Perfect triple, even quadruple confirmation of that short today, guys. We are now at 39,670. The lowest point that we went to at the moment, let's see, is this candle, is uh, 39,437. We can even drop, guys, to 38,600 levels, in my humble opinion. But why wait for that moment to buy Bitcoin if you can buy already now? Dollar cost averaging means you buy Bitcoins at every level during this dip. And that dip is a nice dip. We are already now at a 20% dip if you calculate from 49K. A 20 cent discount on buying your Bitcoins if you compare it to two weeks ago. If we compare it to longer terms, we were just below this level uh, on the 3rd of December of 2023. So it's only a month ago that we were very happy that we were breaking 40k. Now that 40k level is making you unhappy because you're not appreciating <laughs> that we are at 40k. <laughs> Guys, that's the different emotions that can take part on different price levels. Sometimes 40k can make you happy and sometimes 40k can be mm, I'm not happy at all because you saw a little bit higher prices. These dips are normal. These dips are made for buying. Very simple. Let's jump into more zoomed out charts to explain it a little bit better. This is this is the first chart to help you understand these movements. That is the bull market of 2017. During this bull market from all the way down below $900 to 20K, we had six massive dips. 38%, another 38, 33, 38, 36, 29%. Six massive dips. And yes, you could have sold during all those dips because you were afraid, but then you would have missed a shitload of profit. Every bull market is made of a few runs and a few dips, corrections in the market, we call them. This is perfectly normal. This chart is showing even better that if you look from 2012, what kind of dips you already had. Totally on the left you see 2012. 40% dips, 50% dip, 32, 35. And it continues like that, guys. And then you can see also the, 30, the 2016 and 70% dips. That's the 38, 34, 33. All these dips. Look to 2020, 60%, 50% dips. At the end, we kept always going up higher, even to 70K. These dips that you're seeing now are completely normal for the market structure. We need to pick up new liquidity at these lower levels because a lot of people have buy orders around that 38 to 40K level. So we will fall back. The charts already showed us that for a week, I already told you, if we dip, we will dip to these levels. We are exactly doing what I said. So you should be buying these dips. Because you really need to realize that this is the moment that we are just before the halving. Look at that white line. We are here. But this is a very interesting chart because on this chart you can't only see the normal Bitcoin price, those thick lines, blue, uh, red and orange, but also the realized price index. The realized price index where we are at the moment is at those white arrows. If we would now do the same movement as the realized price, for example, of the first cycle, we would end up at 1.4 million per Bitcoin. 
if we would do the second cycle, we would end up at $360,000 per Bitcoin. If we would like repeat the third cycle, we would somewhere end around 90,000 US dollar. So really interesting chart, price model, to see and to show us that we will go up, of course, in Bitcoin. And in my honest opinion, somewhere between 90K and 160K. But we are now just before that halving at block 210,000. And when that block will be mined, that is the moment the halving will take place. And from that moment, the miners will earn less revenue. And from that moment, we will always have a supply shock because the miners want the Bitcoin price to go up. So if the miners want the Bitcoin price to go up, they will need to hold all their Bitcoins. That's why they are selling off their Bitcoins now, so they can make a little bit of profit to survive the six months that they are preparing not to sell their Bitcoins. And in those six months of not selling their Bitcoins from the halving, they create a supply shock because there is not enough Bitcoins coming into the market. And then the price will pump up again, just like it did in the previous three cycles. And then around that new bull market top, probably from 90K on, those miners will start to sell off all those Bitcoins again that they held to take profits. This is a very simple cycle that every time takes place again and again. I will also start to take profit from those 90K levels, maybe even around 70K already. I will be selling 2.5% of my portfolio and maybe around 80K, another 2.5%, and maybe around 90K, another 5%, and 100K, maybe I will sell 15%, and 100. like I will dollar cost average out because I also dollar cost average in around 16K again. 16K, 17K, 18K, 90, I kept buying till 25K. So I need to take my profits also in a dollar cost averaging way. I will dollar cost average out to take my profits. And, and, and yes, that won't be all my Bitcoins. Of course, I will always hold a huge part of my portfolio in Bitcoin, but I do want to multiply my Bitcoins, so I am prepared to take some risk in selling those Bitcoins around the top and buying them back in 2026 again at that bear market bottom. That is my plan for now. I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys. And like I already said last week, there was a massive amount of liquidity around that 38, 39K level, guys. Also a CME gap, I think that was at 39,600 US dollar, somewhere in that area. So there was a logic move from Bitcoin to go and pick up that liquidity at that level, guys. And now I also told you there is a lot of liquidations, short liquidations around that 44K level again. So that is the next level we are gonna visit again. These dips in Bitcoin are completely normal. Look how that 2017 chart showed you six dips during that two-year bull market of more than 30 percent six dips 2021 again a massive amount of dips these are the normal corrections in a bull market i want you to understand nothing is happening to bitcoin it is not all the news that you're reading everywhere negative here negative there it has nothing to do these are the charts these are healthy market corrections that we need to move on higher again, guys. It's very simple like that. It's nothing else, completely normal situations. We were at 49K, we are now at 39K, so that's a very healthy 20% dip. Can we drop another 10%, three to four K to 36, seven K levels? All possible. I've been telling you, there's gonna be an emotional roller coaster ride this two year bull market and you should take part of it by buying every dip. And this is the moment where you decide to be or not to be. Are you gonna to be or are you gonna to not to be? If you're gonna to be, you're buying these Bitcoin dips. This is the beautiful part of the bull market where you buy when the blood is on the streets. When the people think we're gonna fall all the way back down below 30K, all to 36K, 7K, that is when you start buying the dips because there will be a market reversal and you again will be making profit. Perfectly normal Bitcoin bull market, guys. Zoom out in Bitcoin and zoom in at life. Try to enjoy every single minute of the day while you zoom out on the charts and you lean back and enjoy this beautiful roller coaster ride together with me all the way up to 2025. The trading tip for the day, guys, is that Apex Pro has launched their second term of trade to earn. 
I already did the trade to earn competition for 52 weeks uh, two years ago. I earned a shitload of banana tokens and I converted to uh, Apex tokens and then I staked those tokens. I'm still taking revenue daily from that staking mechanism on Apex Pro, guys. The best decentralized exchange out there. And they just announced they're going to do another 52 weeks of trade to earn. So if you want to earn while you're trading on Apex Pro, you should join that competition. You can join the competition by clicking the link, of course, down below the video, because there you will find all the information about the trade to earn competition, guys. And yes, if you earn those tokens, do stake them, because then you multiply those tokens as well. And if you would have done that during the first semester of that trading competition, guys, then you would have made a shitload of money, because that Apex token at that time was trading at 16 cents. And now it went all the way up to a peak of $2.80. To be very honest, I didn't look this morning what price it is, but I expect it to be somewhere now around $2.50. I need to check it later. Maybe you can comment down below what the Apex token price is now. But do use the link down below to sign up and claim your extra bonus to trade on Apex Pro, the best decentralized exchange out there. You don't need to send your funds there. You connect your wallet, the self-custodial wallet, with an exchange and you trade from your own wallet the safest way to trade. Apex Pro, guys, go check that out. That was the trading tip for today. Always look for these beautiful opportunities in the industry where you can earn some extra if you're trading. Now, let's jump into the travel tip. The travel tip, of course, today will be fun because the travel tip is if you visit Thailand, go to Koh Phi for a weekend and party all night long. And that was our plan. I went to Kopipi with my brother and my two oldest daughters, two very good friends from the Netherlands, DJs. They need to play at the Ibiza pool party, Funk D and Waldo. Yes, so we went there and to visit it and we were planning to have parties every day, guys. And we did party every day and we did drink a little bit. But the second day, I drank a little bit too much. And uh, yeah, at nine o'clock in the evening, because it was a day pool party, Ibiza pool party, and at nine o'clock in the evening and crashed on bed and I slept till the next morning, nine again. Yes, getting too old for that shit. And yes, of course, my kids were filming me completely drunk. And when I needed to watch those videos in the morning, I was like, oh my God, Didi, maybe you should stop drinking. Maybe just like a little bit less or maybe just don't drink at all anymore. But uh, we had a lot of fun, guys. And Kopipi, you know, the last time I was in Kopipi, that was 2001. 2001, I was there together with my wife. Kopipi was an island where there was no concrete streets. It was chill, all sand. And it was a one centrum, like little centrum with like this boxing match and where you could drink and there was nothing. It was beautiful, tropical. Now, it's still a very beautiful island, but it's completely built. Like it's completely developed. Now there is a McDonald's, there is now like a pizza, there is like a Burger King, there's like concrete streets everywhere. It still doesn't have cars, which is beautiful because that, you, that gives you the tropical island vibe. No motorized vehicles, only the police has uh, scooters. So it's still a beautiful vibe, beautiful sea, beautiful beach, a lot of things to do around Koh Phi. So it's an amazing island, but it is a little bit focused on partying nowadays. So there is a lot of music, there's a lot of parties. So if you're gonna go there to have some quiet time, don't go to the main area, but then go to Long Beach or one of the two beaches around the corner. Those are still very pristine, white sand beaches uh, with a lot of calm and quietness. Center is full power music 24 seven, guys. A lot of restaurants, a lot of bars. It's like only boom, 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 boom all day long. But what I said, Long Beach and the other two small beaches, beautiful, quiet time over there, guys. So yes, I would definitely advise you guys to go to Koh Phi Phi. Don't skip it. You can even take a short boat trip to Maya Bay. That's where the beach was filmed, you know, the movie of Leonardo DiCaprio at the time. It was filmed also in that area. There's a lot of fun stuff to do over there. But if you drink, don't drink too much. Because you know what it is? It's very cheap to drink on Koh Phi Phi. Like a cocktail is 150 baht. You can even get cocktails for 80 baht. You can get a bucket, like a bucket for 150 baht. That's a bucket with a bottle of vodka, with, with cans of like Sprite or whatever you want to drink it with, uh, ice in it and a full bucket is like 150, like $4 for a bucket full of alcohol. You're drunk for like $20, you're completely drunk, you're wasted. So, and that is exactly what happened to me. Uh, the kids have uh, videos about it. I told them, you can decide what you want to do. If you want to make reels out of them, you want to post them on Instagram, do whatever you want, then you will experience 
Yeah, very drunk. Did he? <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, guys. Uh, yes, yesterday I took time off to uh, recover because I needed to recover a little bit. You know, when, when you're 45 years old and you drink like two, three days in a row, you need to recover at least one day. I'm already proud of myself that I'm fresh and fruity now, this morning, after two days. But yes, I also understand, hmm, maybe just drink a little bit less. And you know, can also have fun with a few Bacardi Cola. It doesn't need to be like 20 Bacardi Cola or something like that. But I ended up emceeing in the DJ booth, etc. guys. <laughs> Long story. Thank you, Fung D and Waldo, for inviting us to the island and having fun with us. Uh, see you at the next party again. Probably drinking water then. But that was the travel tip for today, guys. Go to Go Pee Pee and have fun. Let's jump into the next part. The news for today, guys, is about the spot ETFs. In total, all the ETFs accumulated 96,000 Bitcoins in the first six days. That's around $4 billion worth of value in the first six days. So the first week was a massive success. The Bitcoin spot ETFs outperformed all the spot ETFs that were ever launched before. So the first week, already a massive inflow of liquidity came in. So your question now, a valid question of course is, huh? so why is the Bitcoin price dropping? The Bitcoin price is dropping because one of those spot ETFs, GBTC, that's Grayscale, they are selling all their Bitcoins. Why? Because the fees to hold your Bitcoin spot ETFs on GBTC are 1.5% while the other spot ETF companies only ask like 0.25%. So it's very logical for those people that hold a spot ETF on GPTC now to sell it to buy them back on other platforms where they only pay like half a percent. So that is exactly what is happening. But still, with those massive outflows from GBTC, you can see it in this table over here, massive outflows from GBTC, there are still more inflows from the other nine. So that's really interesting to see because even with those massive outflows of GBTC, we are still positive because of all the inflows on all the other spot ETFs, guys. So that's very good news for the first week. That selling pressure of GBTC can take a little bit longer, guys. I think GBTC has still $20 billion worth of Bitcoin or something. So yeah, they moved a shitload of that to Coinbase to sell. And that is probably also going to happen. So that's keeping selling pressure on Bitcoin. But the moment those other nine spot ETF companies are gonna like have more demand, grow faster, those Bitcoins will all be bought up and more guys. So this is gonna create a massive supply shock. There won't be enough supply for the demand that all the spot ETFs and all the retail investors and everyone else in the world has in Bitcoin. And that will lead to a supply shock. And I think they're timing that supply shock perfectly around that halving. So, be prepared for this emotional roller coaster ride and be prepared to see these dips of 20 to 30 percent, maybe well six times a dip like in 2017, and be prepared to buy those dips because after that we will see a bounce back. And I believe that bounce could go even back to around the 61k level, like you saw on the chart last week. I showed you this chart beautifully that there is a level around 61k that we should be visiting anywhere soon this year. Could also be the end of the year, guys. I know one thing for sure. I think in 2024, we will see a new autumn high above the 70K level. And that could be between now and December, but that's a beautiful moment to buy Bitcoin still at 30K levels, 35, 39, 37K, whatever level you think it might go. But everything in this 30 to 40K range is buying the dip, is buying Bitcoin very cheaply, when you zoom out and you see that we will go above that 70k level, that's doubling your capital in 12 months. No other investment will double your capital in 12 months time, guys. No other investment. Yeah, maybe if you invest in buckets that they use in Kopi uh, to drink. <laughs> I think they will double an investment as well. So that was the news for today, guys. A lot of selling pressure, but also a lot of buying pressure. We are in the plus when it comes to the spot ETS, which is amazing. And after six days, already almost 100,000 Bitcoin bought combined by those ETS. Good start, good start. Let's see how this will develop for the rest of 2024. Let's jump into the next part. The next part should be answering uh, one of the questions of the followers, but I already answered that question uh, with the travel tip because the question was, why did he, were you not there on Saturday and Sunday and not on Monday? Now, first of all, 
on Friday's video, I told you guys, I probably won't make a live AMA this weekend because I needed some family time. I announced it very neatly on Friday, guys. Probably I will not do an AMA. AMA. So Saturday and Sunday, ah, I was not doing an AMA because I was really having fun with my daughters. Monday, I could have done a video, but I was feeling kind of not like completely well. It was like, hmm, am I still alive? <laughs> <laughs> it was a feeling of like, hey shit, I'm missing some part of the movie I just experienced in Kopipi. Maybe take it easy for one day, eat healthy, drink healthy. And of course, I didn't see my wife for three days. So you know what a man wants to do when he didn't see his wife for three days. He wants to do jiggy jiggy jiggy. He wanted to be. <laughs> I wanted to be and not not to be. So I need to focus all day on recovery. So in the evening, I could perform again. I could be for my wife. Yes, <laughs> so that is the only honest answer why I wasn't there on Monday. Um, of course, that's not happening often to me. Like it's the first time this year. <laughs> we are just at the beginning of the year. Uh, but last year, it also didn't happen often. I think maybe one or two times that I party too much and I couldn't make a video. I could have, but you know, when you get older, your face also looks really sh like shit. <laughs> when you party two days. So if I would have appeared yesterday in video, I think a lot of like memes would have been created out of that one. So no, didn't do that, didn't want to risk that. And I had uh, yesterday a beautiful day with my wife having dinner and uh, all the jiggy 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 to be or not to be. That's all what you want to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to give the details, but it was a very good rest day yesterday, guys. You now we even were watching a Netflix series. I, I did Romain and Jess had decided to start watching Obligated, I think it was something, in the weekend, so I started to watch that as well with them. So yesterday was a day off. Hopefully you can also understand uh, the situation. So I am back, I am back. Look, I'm here walking and talking again. That was the answer to the question of one of the followers. Uh, my honest answer, yes, I was really in recovery mode. Now let's jump into the last part of the video. And the last part of the video, guys, of course, the life uh, advice. Uh, my life advice for today is a quote. And the quote is, happiness will never come to those that can't appreciate what they already have. And I think it's a very true quote. If you do not appreciate what you already have, you will never find the happiness you're searching for. Because it starts all with appreciating what you already have. Appreciate every morning that you're alive, that your family is alive, that you're healthy, that you're waking up after a night of drinking or whatever. You know, if you start to appreciate those small things, then you will also understand how to find happiness in, um, in the whole picture, guys. Because at the end, it's all about appreciation. If you appreciate whatever you already have or own or achieved, that is the moment when you get closer to finding real happiness. Because else, it will be a continuous search for happiness while you're not appreciating what you already have. So why would you then ever find that happiness if you can't appreciate what you already have? It is very important that you always start with appreciating what you already have. And if you keep appreciating that, in the end, you will find also that beautiful state of happiness. But if you're always in the search for more and more and more, then you will never be happy. And there is many quotes about this, guys. There is even a quote of Bob Marley, uh, one of my favorite musicians, of course, uh, about this subject. And that quote is, money is numbers and numbers never end. If it takes money to find happiness, your search for happiness will also never end. That's a very beautiful, powerful quote from Bob Marley. Um, also about this subject, guys. So it's very interesting to see people always in the search for more happiness while they're not appreciating what they already have. And it could be numbers, it could be materialistic stuff, but it can also be non-materialistic stuff. Appreciating I have the possibility to party with my daughters two days in Kopipi. Appreciating to be coming home with a small present for my wife. All these small things, you should start to appreciate them to be able to even find that real happiness that you're searching for, guys. Always remember that if you have the possibility to travel and to go wherever you want, whenever you want, you belong to the 3% of the richest people of the world. If you have a house and if you have food and you have a job, you're still belonging somewhere to the 10% richest people of the world. 
90% of the world doesn't have that luxury position. And that is what I mean with appreciating what you have. We sometimes don't realize how rich we truly are because we compare ourselves only to those people that you're surrounded with. You're looking at, ah, my neighbor, how many cars does he have? Ah, my nephew, how big is his house? Ah, oh, my uncle, how much pension does he receive? We're always comparing our capital with those people that are surrounding us and that grew up with us and that have the same luxury position of, for example, being born in the Netherlands. But there's 90% of the world that is less rich in any kind of way. In food, in house, a roof above your head, all that stuff. 90% of the world is not doing as good as you are. And if you realize that every day, that you belong to the 10% lucky people that has food every day, that has a roof above his head, that even has money to go on a holiday, or to go party, or to do anything else with that money, buy an iPhone, you are one of the lucky 10% of the world that has that luxury position. And only that already is a thing you should appreciate every day. You should start with appreciating that you woke up, you're still alive, that your wife is still alive, your kids are still alive, and that you woke up in a house with probably a bank account that you should delete and you should be buying bitcoins. But if you own already bitcoins, you're even waking up with bitcoins. You are already living a dream, but often you don't realize that is already the part of the dream that you're living. You want more, more, and more. And that is why that search for happiness will never end. Because you want more, more, and more. You should start with appreciating what you already have. Every time, again and again, when I go away from my wife, like for two days, this time I was with my daughters, I really appreciate uh, the love that she's giving me every time when I get home. And I really start to appreciate again how beautiful uh, my life is with my whole family traveling and all that stuff. But I, that's the big things to appreciate. I mostly start in the morning, guys, with uh, appreciating the small things. I think that's very important when you wake up that you start to think for yourself, wow, I woke up. Wow, I'm healthy. Wow, I'm able to drink a coffee. Wow, my wife is still alive. Wow, my kids are still alive. Wow, they're all healthy. Wow, they're all happy. Wow, I have a dog. <laughs> I even appreciate the dog. No, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, I still don't like the dog too much. Of course I like the dog, but still like, yeah, you know, he, he makes my traveling life a little bit more difficult and that is uh, yeah, not what I want. I want a happy, very simple travel life. And a happy, very simple travel life is when you go and travel all over the world without needing to take any steps. If you're thinking about buying a dog while you're traveling, don't do it because there's a lot of documents, there's a lot of papers, there's a lot of shit you need to sign every time again and again when you want to take the dog to another country. So that's a free travel tip. <laughs> Don't buy a dog, guys. Now, that was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about everything else I talked about? And what do you think about that happiness part of the video? That you should start to appreciate what you already have. You know, you should appreciate that every day when you wake up, you can watch this beautiful video made by a long-haired dude on the beach in Phuket. Thanks for watching, wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again. Bam!